We have a couple vintage Sony Trinitron televisions here we're going to work on with a new capacitor tester that I purchased. We're going to be trying it out on these TVs. It's the capacitor wizard, in-circuit capacitor tester. And this is small one here is a KV9300. And the bigger one here is a KV1942. I always seem to find bad electrolytics in these. They probably, as a general rule, should just be all completely recap. All the electrolytics should be changed. But the person who brought me these sets just wants them restored to basic, decent operating condition. Both of them have similar issues, which is uh, like a, a flicker... Uh, in the picture um, and it could be a CRT issue it could be a capacitor issue it could be a soldering a bad solder issue but we're gonna start with the small one if the video seems a little bit confusing it's because I've already diagnosed the bigger one and um, so yeah let's dig into the smaller one we'll check all the solders and capacitors I will say that it does seem to work good for me. I've put about 50 hours on it and it seems stable and reliable and good so let's just open it up and kind of service it and do a tune-up on it and then we'll get into the bigger one later in the video. It looks like somebody recapped a lot of this. Um, I'm examining the soldering on the back of the CRT and I don't, it all looks pretty good. I'm looking at it through a pretty good magnifying headset. Yeah, this is a been all recapped. The this board back here has been recapped, not the bottom board. And look at some of these Ching X C H E N G X Ching X. That's got to be a long life cap. Yeah, this all looks like it was redone. So we'll test some of these on the bottom board if you're interested in how this thing's put together. It looks like the deflection boards back here, the IF and video processing and power supply is down on the bottom. Here's the flyback. Sure, yeah, this uses that SCR deflection. I hope that's legible in the video. So we've got two 4.7 at 160s right here and these are notorious for going open in these sets and this thing is designed to test them in circuit. The testing voltage is so low it won't trigger anything else. Well that one's unexpectedly good. That one's unexpectedly good. So I'm going to go through and test the rest of them. Um, we'll see. That's the main filter. So it beeps above a half an ohm or below a half an ohm. So anyway, I went through this one and... I didn't see much flickering at all in the 50 hours I used it, but I'm going to just say it's a CRT issue. It's more of a show and tell. Great convergence, it is, I think it is, CRT might be a little soft though. Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, bigger one. This is a little bit bigger of a gamer's choice set than we're usually working on. This is like a 19 inch uh, Sony Trinitron from probably the late 70s. And the symptom is poor high voltage regulation flickering. 
and I bought a new toy and we're gonna try it out on this set without even turning it on I'm trying to get a model number here let me see if I can do that anyway way 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 too long overdue way too late to the game I picked up the capacitor wizard ESR tester and um, this is a pretty interesting piece of kit it'll do a lot of different things it's not cheap but nothing good is cheap um, yeah basically you just in circuit electrolytic capacitor tester tells us the ESR and I already started probing around in this uh, TV and I can tell you that the whole thing needs to be recapped okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just test some of the capacitors here I hope you can see that um, it beeps at a half an ohm ESR so So I'm going to test a few of these capacitors and there's one right here. As you can see it's reading uh, about two and three quarter ohm so that one's bad. Uh, I'm going to test this one that's a little physically smaller here. I can't read the values. We got the lovely hydraulic noise in the background. So we got one here. Jeez. Look at that one. Barely moves a needle. That one is dead. So I'm going to pull that one out and let's look. Well, let me see, I believe I got a, I got one right here down, down here somewhere. It's right here. That one's good. See that pegs the meter. Now here's a couple things to keep in mind with this. Um, on the capacitors, as the voltage rating of the capacitor incle increases, the ESR for a given value will, will increase. So a brand new 10 microfarad capacitor that's 16 volts will say read half an ohm. A 10 microfarad capacitor that's 400 volts will say read 4 ohms. So that's why you really don't want to just put arbitrarily higher voltage capacitors in a circuit within reason. Um, so the higher the voltage rating of the capacitor, the higher the ESR, and I'm talking about brand new, not worn out. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just looking for ones that are in the red scale, because the whole thing needs to be recapped. This also will not identify shorted capacitors. So the one that measured dead is that one this one measures weak this one measures good and you know I just bin it out of the way but of course this one's baked out that resistor is right up against it so yeah four this is a 4.7 at 160 and it's reading open so in this it measures I, I guess uh, 140 ohms. Here's a brand new 4.7 at uh, 200 volts. So if it was a 4.7 at 160, it would probably measure about 2 ohms, not 2.5. So this thing is pretty damn accurate. Okay, this one's a 33 at 160, and this one just measures open. According to this, this is bad. How is this set even working? Here's a brand new 33 at 160. It measures right on a half an ohm. Okay, so we had two here that were completely bad. I'm going to go over the rest of these down here and see. I'm just going for the ones that are, you know, pretty much open. 
Uh, then we can fire it up and see how it works. I got to say this is definitely faster than just about any other method I've used and Jordan Peer has been using one of these forever. I should have, should have, I, yeah. Okay, I got one right here that's pretty much in the red. That is this one right here. Let me get it out. It's another 4.7 at 160 and yeah it came up a little bit because I got it hot. I also noticed that it looks like there's some failing solder joints here. Not looks like those are failing so I'm gonna reflow those. I always like to have a camera rolling when I power these up. I don't see how it was working. Well, that's an interesting. Maybe the vertical's just too slow. I'm having to do a complete setup on this again. Pin cushion, uh, horizontal width, horizontal centering, everything. Convergence the electronic convergence because it just whenever you change capacitors in the deflection circuit it's all clerky dinkler because it's probably been adjusted and calibrated for the bad caps size she's a super brave dog um, I love her so much and I just thought this tiny dog could protect this huge human being um, this uh, Sony has an absolutely beautiful picture well, Macy had surgery for several puncture wounds, but is expected to make a full recovery. In the meantime, a GoFundMe campaign has already raised more than ten thousand dollars. Kind of a, that's kind of a that's kind of a weird thing I going on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. I'm oh, so glad he was thing. there. Well, we're not going to stop. Is with that a loose? Uh, cameras, uh, what's, what's going on there? Uh -oh. This invader has a community really creeped out. Also, ready for a workout? The perfect way to beat the pandemic pounds. How you can get told to find out how much you could save. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> in his world. <laughs> Might be a problem in the CRT. 6386 for your free auto insurance quote today. AAA Insurance, helping you save more. Back to school starts at WSS. WSS offers the largest selection of shoe styles of top name brands, all at the best value. Shop now and save on great brands like Nike, Adidas. Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 9. Now at 9, more mask mandates in American cities following L.A. County's lead to try and beat back the fourth wave of COVID-19. And it's not COVID, it's a drug-resistant superbug, and it's spreading fast from D.C. to Dallas. And a flotilla of boats set sail from Miami across the Straits of Florida to taunt the Cuban government. Welcome to KCAL 9 News at 9, and we are streaming on CBS in Los Angeles. I'm Pat Harvey. American cities are implementing new measures to make sure this fourth wave of the coronavirus pandemic doesn't spiral out of control. As a new projection from researchers shows, they expect cases to peak again in October. Lilia Luciano is in Los Angeles. Of... On the rise. How many years of TV repair videos are going to contain this crap? Big celebrations and big trouble. Nevada is now one of the country's biggest COVID hotspots along with four other states. Nevada's positivity rate, which measures community spread, has been on the rise for 39 consecutive days. Well, Clark County now requires masks for employees. It definitely gives me a sense of safety. There are no mandates for anyone else. Almost no masks indoors. Why not a mask mandate for the tourists? So right now, we just implemented the mask mandate for the employees. So that's the, that's the focus. We're not considering a mask mandate for, for customers or guests right now. We're going to follow the data. As COVID surges across the country, mask requirements and recommendations are making a comeback too. St. Louis is the latest city to reinstate a mandate beginning Monday. Meanwhile, just 40% of eligible Alabama residents are fully vaccinated, meaning 60% are not as cases climb. And the state's Republican governor had some harsh words. Folks supposed to have common sense. 
but it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. But a newly released poll from the Associated Press, which surveyed unvaccinated Americans, found 81% were either definitely not or probably not willing to get the shot. Nevada has now brought in FEMA, the agency that typically responds to natural disasters to help set you up know, in hard to reach I areas could where vaccine just, rates are low. Yeah, I could the just go the rest of my life. And make it accessible for them to get the vaccine. That Maybe I just go to all radio videos. So we can save lives. I'm going to check the CRT on this big Trinitron. It seems to wig out after it's been run for about, uh, I don't know, five, five to ten minutes. It wigs out for about a minute, and then it calms down. And it really seems like it's in the CRT, because if I just tap on the neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put you on this. And I got the camera on the lowest resolution it'll do. So here we go. Maybe I should find a musical selection and just let you, you stare at this. So let's see. Uh, set heater. I'm going to go up. I think this is the right adapter socket. 6.3, set cutoff. Seems like a, this is a strong CRT. Just gonna bring this down. That's what a good CRT should look like. Now let's, let's just watch it. They're not real even, are they? We always got the traffic noise of the city to keep you company in the background. The blambulance. I don't even know if the fault would show up in the cathode emissions. It might be something else arcing internally. People, people honk at the blamby lance. Okay, well, I should try to national caviar bromulex. The CRT seemed to not show anything with the emissions, so I reflowed a bunch more solder joints. I'm not really seeing anything, and then I ran it for a while, and it seemed solid. So I'm going to let him have it back and let him test it. Uh, you know, I can't believe it was working with three open capacitors at all, and then it needed a complete reset up of all the uh, pin cushion and convergence. So, I mean, it's got a nice picture now. It's just, it seems to have this phase after it runs for about five minutes where it goes clinky dinkler for, uh, I don't know, a minute or so, and then it straightens out and it's good. So, it's a very bizarre issue, but I really feel like it's in the CRT. Because I tap on the CRT, it wigs out. I tap on the boards, it does not wig out. Anyway, there's a couple Sony's, kind of a rough short video. But I just wanted to play with the new cap tester. I think it's going to really speed up repair of stuff for me in the future. Definitely worthwhile investment. And yeah, I paid for it, not sponsored.